invited uh, Zid and Sadar, who's a leading Muslim public intellectual, British public intellectual, to come along and talk to us about his own history and about his sense of the position of Islam today in British culture. He did just that and exceeded our very high expectations. I think most people don't know that, that my first, it wasn't really a job, I mean, it was kind of assignment, if you like, a journalistic assignment, was at Hackney Gazette. Now, Hackney Gazette was not too far from where I lived. During my sixth form, I was kind of determined to become a journalist, so I would go to Hackney Gazette every day and ask for a job. And every day they will say, you know, basically, get lost. But one day, after trying regularly for six months, they, they said, okay, there's a, there's a fire somewhere where you live, see, see if you can write a report for us on that fire. So off I went to find this fire and discovered that my own school was on fire. So I did write a report uh, and then you know, I took it in and, and I'm sure to this day they think that I set the school on fire to actually, you know, get a job in journalism. I write about Islam, but I also write about the future. Uh, I also write about culture studies and postmodernism. And a great deal of my early career is about uh, science. I worked as a science journalist for Nature and for New Scientist. The book I've been talking about today is called Islam uh, Beyond Violent Jihadis. It is essentially a book that came out of a Bradford Literary Festival. Last year I found myself at a Bradford Literary Festival and one of my job was to go to a secondary school for girls in Bradford called Bellevue Girls School. I found myself in a kind of class of 30 uh, Muslim girls aged between 16 and 18, some hijabified, some not hijabified. And the teacher introduced me and said, today's topic is everything you always wanted to know about Islam but were afraid to ask. A number of hands went up and I asked a, a, a girl who was wearing hijab what, uh, what questions she wanted to ask. And she said, how do we determine the will of God? So I kind of took a double take and I said, what? She said, how do we determine the will of God? I replied, look, uh, this is a question that we've been struggling with for the last 1400 years and we still haven't found an answer. Can we start with a more simple question? A lot of hands went up. So this time I asked a, a girl who she said, do you think we can reconcile is Islam and postmodernism? At that time, I mean, I thought I'm in the wrong place. But what proceeded uh, for about three hours was a forensic analysis by these six formers of not just of Islamic thought and history, but my ideas and, and kind of my uh, writings. And I thought to myself, if 16 and 18 year old Muslims girl can do that, well, they're going to change the world. We talked about essentially the three stages of the Anglo-Muslim journey in the post-war period from a essentially unified politically passive confessional community through to a somewhat theologically divided community in the 1970s and 80s and then an outward looking and politically engaged community uh, but at the level of identity politics rather than class politics and we finished by discussing the challenges faced by Muslim communities in this country in particular today.